Well, everyone, welcome to today's session. I'm Jarl Jonas with Blackboard, and I'm joined by Sarah Bishop Root. And we're here to talk about Core Sites by Blackboard, which is a free and scalable hosted online learning platform that you can leverage for open education initiatives. Again, I'm going to be recording today's session. I have to double check with the uh, Open Ed Conference folks to see where they might be posting our link. But I did post my email in the uh, chat room for you to go ahead and send me a note. Since we are recording, I won't ask you to share your information in the chat because that will become part of the recording. But just go ahead and send me a note by email and I can send you out the recording after today's session. Okay, so just a quick introduction myself. I'm uh, Jarl Jonas, currently the director of Core Sites by Blackboard. But just a, a quick insight into my history. I did start out as a high school English teacher and uh, soon after went to get on a, a master's degree at New York University, uh, finding my better niche with faculty development and online course development and implementing technology into the classroom. So I spent quite a number of years at NYU conducting those kinds of activities. And then I joined Blackboard about eight years ago, uh, first in our consulting organization. And the last couple of years, I've been directing our course sites initiative, what we're going to be learning a lot more today. Now I know Sarah was going to potentially be delayed joining us. Let me see if Sarah is with us now. Do you want to do a quick intro, Sarah? Okay, I have a feeling she still might be on her other call. But Sarah works with me uh, very closely to help uh, interact with everyone in our, in our core sites community and help make everyone aware of all the benefits that you can take advantage of. So we're here today to inform you a lot of what you can leverage to help advance some open education initiatives uh, at your institutions. So I wanted to help you answer some key questions today that you might have come with. And as I'm reading through these, you're welcome to go ahead and input some further ones into the chat room, uh, the chat space that you might want to also have answered. But we wanted to talk, I want to get to know you a little bit and talk about your experience with Open Educational Resources, which is the acronym OER that I'm using. And then I want to show you how you can potentially leverage our resource to help you create Open Educational Resources. I then want to move into seeing what your experience have been so far with Massive Open Online Courses. And that's the acronym that I'm using here called MOOCs. Um, and you know, just to see who you, who's participated in some, who's perhaps uh, wanting to create some, wanting to lead some. And then we're going to talk a little bit about then how course sites can potentially help you get started with creating a MOOC. We'll also discuss a bit about some things that you can take some um, courses with us that are being hosted on course sites by other institutions. So I'll definitely point out those resources for you as well. And while I have questions and discussion at the end, feel free to go ahead and enter questions into the chat. The microphone is open as well uh, in case you do want to press the talk button and when I do stop and ask for questions. Okay, so any other questions that you did want to have answered today, uh, Again, please feel free to go ahead and enter them into the chat area now so I can go ahead and make sure we have time to address those. So just to get started, to warm up a little bit, I wanted to go ahead and again learn a little bit more about you all and your experience with open educational resources. So using that participant response tool up again in the uh, participant area, we have a yes and no option. The fourth button over, you'll see the check mark. So our first question, I want to know if you've used open educational resources. And these are just open web resources that you might have implemented in your courses. Um, and you're welcome to share with us in the chat as well, which become a part of the recording of the resources that you have found so everyone is aware. Excellent. So a good majority of us, seven of us out of um, our group have gone ahead and used resources in our course. Again, welcome to share what those are in the chat window if you'd like. And which one of us, if we go to the question number two, how many of us have then created and shared open educational resources? So I'll go ahead and clear that list from the first question. How many of us have created open educational resources? And then usually by creating them, we are, are sometimes sharing them. Okay? So a little bit less. Excellent. Thank you for those responses. That helps me to know a little bit more about where you're coming from. So today we are going to focus on the creation 
Um, and we'll also talk a little bit about this, this, the discovery of resources as well that you, you might be able to leverage. Um, but as we're seeing in the last 15 years or so, more and more instructors like you are putting materials online, and that could be within an LMS. You might be using a combination of web technologies, open technologies, blogs, wikis, and such. But what we're trying to do um, here at Blackboard is go ahead and break down some of the walls that some traditional LMSs uh, might put up to prevent the sharing of material. But at Blackboard, really be, believe in open education and, and making sure that instructors have the ability to go ahead and publish their work and share that across uh, the different discipline and disciplines that you may be involved in. So we're going to first take a look at some key use cases and goals um, as we were putting together some of the resources to you, for you to leverage some of the use cases that we considered um, in the the creation and sharing of open educational resources. And first and foremost, we wanted to be able to empower instructors with the ability to author content. And that would be a variety of content, and that, uh, whether that be text, audio, video. So we'll talk a little bit about how course sites can help you in that capacity. We then felt it very important to be able to have you access uh, licensing, uh, knowing that copyright is uh, a big question in terms of the open education or resource space, but there is a great resource and great entity that is, has risen in um, visibility called Creative Commons, and they are uh, someone who we partnered with to go ahead and create access to licensing when you do go ahead and create some open education or resources within our platform. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. We then want to make sure that we easily facilitate the sharing of the course elements and the uh, course package. Okay, so we're going to be talking about how you can author content and go ahead and share that material as an open education or resource. Okay, so to be able to give you the ability to do that quite easily. And then really the importance of that is as you're sharing for to allow other people to discover those resources. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that we've aligned with, uh, like the LRMI, which I'll explain in detail a bit later, um, to go ahead and enable all web users to be able to have powerful search opportunities to discover the resources that you are creating. And then you know, be able to broaden the usage of the OER. So the types of ways and the formats in which we're allowing you to share really go ahead and help you facilitate and broaden the use of the materials that you might create or enable those of you who are looking for resources to be able to incorporate those into your classes. Okay, so the resource we're going to be talking about today is Course Sites, and that can be located at CourseSites.com. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that resource, and we'll also go ahead and place that into the chat window so you'll have that with you as well. Okay, so our first use case that we took a look at was course authoring. And again, with course sites, you just see a screenshot here of the home page. It's a very easy resource for you to get started. Um, there's a very simple process to sign up to create an account, and then you're automatically brought through a process where you'll go ahead and establish uh, a course. And then within that course, you can begin to build your materials, import your materials, and construct the learning opportunity that you would like to share. As you get into there, you'll see that we have um, quite a powerful platform for you to take advantage of. And what Core Sites is doing is, is being powered by our Blackboard technology. Uh, and it's available at no cost to you to use, uh, again, to be able to share your open educational resources as well as offer some massive open online courses. Or for those of you who just might be looking for a platform to help supplement your courses, as a side conversation, you know, that can you can leverage course sites for that as well. But our Blackboard Learn technology is something that goes, provides you with the ability to supplement your on-site courses or perhaps provide a full online course uh, with some asynchronous and synchronous tools to go ahead and enable learning for the, the students that you'll be involved with. We do have some mobile capabilities so that students can access your courseware from uh, their mobile devices. And we have some synchronous technology to go ahead and now allow you to connect to students like we are doing today, uh, in case that's part of your curriculum or your learning experience. And we do have some um, push technology or some uh, technology that allows you to communicate students on their mobile devices or allows students to opt into notifications on mobile devices knowing that they are using them more and more uh, every day. So we'll take a look at some of these components that really make sense, again, related to the open educational resource and MOOC story. 
but I just wanted to give you a sense of you know, what was Core Sites and, and where you could go ahead and get started. So during your course authoring phase, again, you'll be brought through a step-by-step -step process that helps you along the way, where you'll, be, you'll have the choice of over 30 templates, 30 core structures, as we call them here in the system, to choose from to go ahead and match your instructional approach or your teaching style. So you might be following a, a textbook, and you can go ahead and set your course up by chapter. You might be looking for a, most, a more social learning kind of, of choice like constructivism, and we go ahead and provide you with a sample menu to go ahead and start with, and that highlights some of the tools that we feel will support that pedagogical approach. And once you apply those changes, the course will be built for you, and, and it's very highly customized. Um, today we're not going to spend too much time on the uh, tutorial of the constructing the course itself, just really more the benefits of how you can leverage the platform. But we do have some full training programs available within Course Sites once you get started, including a self-paced course that really brings you through how to go ahead and you know, completely build the course environment to be an effective learning experience for the students that you're looking to target. Okay, that second use case then again was enabling the access to licensing for the OER packages that you're looking to create. So skipping forward like a cooking show, we're going to pull that um, cake out of the oven a little bit and pretend that we've built our course and all the resources are set and available. As we do that, we have an option in the course, uh, in the course um, control panel to publish your course as an open educational resource. And here this is enabling you to publish this out to a, a public course homepage for others to consume. You'll see you'll be provided with a URL here to share uh, through your social networks and through your colleagues and students if they want to share that out as well. And then your course would be tagged with what's known as a CC by license. Okay, and that's created by Creative Commons. So if, if you haven't heard of Creative Commons yet, you can explore a little bit more about them here at creativecommons.org. And the CC BY license is one of their most open licenses that enables you and other users who are consuming this content to be able to remix and reuse, okay, pretty much to share as they, uh, as they see fit for their purpose. But the the requirement is that they give you, as the, the main author or whoever has contributed to that course, attribution. So they must go ahead and attribute the work back to the original authors. So we do this automatically within the course as well as the course is imported uh, or and, and the package is created. We're creating this license for you as well as creating based on some of the metadata that I'll skip back here to show you all the contributors, the main authors, these are going into that uh, particular license attribution, and this is embedded into the course. So uh, they have no question about where the material came from. Okay, so when that course is published, I mentioned that it's published to a course homepage. And this is part of the capabilities of course sites that you are provided with uh, both an instructor homepage, so I could have something like yarl.coursites.com, and that is something where you can send to your students to access the courses in which you're teaching. And then on the course homepages themselves, you can see is where we've exposed the access to all the open educational resources that have been published. So the metadata that you input into the fields go ahead and get published here. And you'll see that the users who are searching then upon and for these resources have the ability to download the course in a car common cartridge format as well as in a Blackboard package format. So the common cartridge format allows the users to import that material into other learning management systems, perhaps Moodle, uh, perhaps Sakai, perhaps Desire to Learn. So again, broadening that use case. As, and the Blackboard package could be if you have access to a Blackboard installation on your campus or at your school or organization. And again, you'll see just a reminder of the CC BY license. We're going to be talking a little bit more about these course home pages. Um, during our discussion about MOOCs, but I just wanted to make sure that you are aware that as you are publishing your courses as this resource, uh, that you, these, these pages do become searchable. So again, I, I did mention early on that we had partnered with some and aligned ourselves with some uh, more current initiatives, particularly about the discovery of open educational resources. And one of those is called the Learning Resource Metadata Initiative. And this is an initiative um, 
basically being funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but organized by Creative Commons and the Association of Educational Publishers. And as you see a quote here from Cable Green, as we had um, worked with him to go ahead and really make sure that our capabilities uh, enabled you all to not only have licensing, but that we were good stewards of the community, ensuring that that license and attribution was carried all the way through. But this initiative really is building a framework and a new schema of metadata uh, in particular. So the LRMI, is their, their goal is to create a very powerful search experience. I'm not sure if any of you have tried searching uh, a recipe on Google, where you come up with uh, a list of ingredients on the left, and you have the ability to filter down your search by those ingredients. But imagine, and the LRI is imagining a search experience similar to that, but as you're searching for open educational resources, that you'll be able to filter perhaps by grade level or skill level or standards, um, you know, depending on the competencies that you're using and the competencies that are place within the, the metadata, metadata framework. So we've aligned with that framework and have on this home page in the background embedded some of the schema so that again as folks are searching through for web, web resources that we're going ahead and uh, helping to create those powerful learning experiences, helping your packages be discovered. And as you can see up here, you have the ability or others as they're finding these resources have the ability to share these across their social learning networks. Great. Thank you so much, Rhonda, for sharing that with everybody. Okay, so you can read a little bit more about the LRMI at that web page that Rhonda shared if you have some more interest in that in that project. We're keeping up to date in terms of our schema on those pages, again, just so we can help advance and, and really broaden the, the discovery of the resources that you might create. Then the other use case we talked about was the course discovery component. Um, so in addition to the LRMI framework that we've placed on the page, the public course homepages that are available in the social sh network sharing, um, again, with the, with the CC by licenses, what we'll be showing um, and launching this week, actually, is what we're calling an open educational catalog. And this is going to be geared a little bit more towards the MOOC uh, that are being offered. But any of the courses that do end up becoming published as open educational resources, will be tagged as such on this new catalog we'll be launching. And that way, users could go ahead and access uh, the course packages and that course homepage that we just looked at from this catalog as well. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about that too during our MOOC discussion. All right, and then there's that broaden the use, broadening the use of those packages. So again, many of you, as we polled you earlier, were, many, were more users of OER rather than the creators. So we're really looking to broaden both stories by providing both a Blackboard package as well as a common cartridge package. This enables all the, the folks who are finding these educational resources the ability to import that package into other LMSs that they want to go ahead and leverage. Okay, or, that, or that they might have access to. And just so you're aware, um, you know, in case you're not, if you don't have a Blackboard implementation at your school, more than okay. If, you're, if you find a package through our web discovery or through our catalog, you can go ahead and import that into course sites without an issue and go ahead and leverage that resource with your students as you see fit. Okay, because again, we are being powered by Blackboard technology. All right, so I, just, I provided this um, slide here just as a note too that if you do stay in touch with us, you'll start to see this summer that we're taking uh, another big leap forward when it comes to sharing open educational resources and even just the uh, sharing of content in general across your courses, across other courses through a platform that Blackboard will be launching called Explore. Um, this will be tied into course sites where you'll have the ability in particular to discover, let's say, Khan, Khan Academy uh, content, but it will be a very easy process to also discover content um, that either folks have shared through the published course as OER feature that we just reviewed or um, that other folks are, are going ahead and creating and sharing across the Explore network. So this is really looking to move content sharing into the cloud and really create a great academic framework and an academic sharing network for you to be able to 
not only uh, create content, but also to more so discover content and incorporate that into your courses. So definitely stay in touch with us. I'll give you some options on how you can do that when we close today, but you'll be seeing some great stuff from us this summer as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pause there. I didn't see too many questions come through the, the chat window. Um, so I'll go ahead and keep rolling forward, but let me pause for just a moment, see if there are any questions that you had about how you could leverage Core Sites as a way for you to go ahead and create and or discover some open educational resources. So we do also have, um, and I'm providing you with a URL. Let me go ahead and put the, so it becomes a link for you automatically. And I think I mixed it up a little bit. So ignore my first link, I apologize. I'm going to give you a link to a course, a, a actually a current MOOC that is running on course sites. So this is a good segue to uh, MOOCs. If you haven't participated in one yet, I can give you the opportunity to do so. So opensuny.coursesites.com. They are currently running a MOOC on uh, creating, locating, uh, and utilizing open educational resources. So that is going to be a really expansive conversation on a lot more resources that you can use both, again, to discover, create, and use uh, open educational resources in your courses. So please go ahead and feel free. It's an ongoing MOOC. Um, uh, it's basically meant to be self-paced, but they do go ahead and facilitate the experience and check on the questions. And there is a, an opportunity for you to attain some badges if you'd like. And we'll talk about that as well uh, shortly in the MOOC section. Okay. So I don't see many questions coming through. Feel free again to keep putting them in the chat. We'll go ahead now and take a, a new, a new um, poll here. And I'm interested to learn about your experience in particular with MOOCs. So first, let me ask if you can respond yes or no if you've participated in a MOOC so far. And again, a MOOC being a massive open online course, it could have been one made available just through the open web. There were a couple early on. I know digital storytelling was quite popular, a change MOOC in 2011. Um, and now this past year we've gotten quite a few available within some learning management systems course sites. We've run some. I know D2L has run some. Canvas has run some. Okay, so we've got about 11 folks. So that's a good majority of us that have participated. Okay, so, and then we have three of us who have not. So that is quite okay as well. All right, so let me clear that out. Thank you for responding. Number two, have, I, have you created or led a MOOC thus far? How many of us have created or led a MOOC thus far? Okay, so almost like the open educational resource, a lot of us are consuming um, and not necessarily creating, but again, that's okay. So today we're going to talk about both stories as well, how you could go ahead and begin to create and offer a MOOC yourself if you'd like, um, as well as how you might be able to participate in some of our open educational uh, courses. Okay, so actually no one has led today. Okay. And I know that um, you know, when we talk about MOOCs in particular, there's a lot of different uh, types of MOOCs going on. There's different uh, business reasons and goals for institutions to go ahead and offer these opportunities. So uh, you know, part of the ability for you to get started, what we wanted to do with Core Sites, almost like with OER, is really give you free and open access to the ability to go ahead and offer an open online course. Whether you expect it to be massive or not, it doesn't necessarily have to have the big M attached to it. We do have some courses that have you know, just even 50 folks. Um, we have some that are in the thousands. So no matter your reasons, um, you know, and you just want to get started, this is definitely a place where we think um, and you know, where we've geared course sites to enable those who may not want to be encumbered by uh, agreements right now. They just want to get comfortable with the space. They want to know what it's like to offer an open educational course. Um, so this is really what course sites can offer you today. So we're going to talk a little bit more deeply about the platform itself 
and then go ahead and talk more about some of the courses that we've offered, and then go ahead and talk about you know, some of the MOOC-friendly platform, uh, MOOC-friendly components that would be able to enable you to really engage with your learners and help go ahead and advance some of the efforts that you have. So we took a look at a slide earlier of some of the technologies that, that Core Sites is being driven by. And really the way we look at Core Sites is one learning landscape. And when we first put it, um, we launched Core Sites a few years ago, again, we really wanted to demonstrate how all these technologies could come together to create a very powerful learning experience. And this is really just when the massive open online course conversation was beginning to take hold. So a few of us thought, hey, Core Sites is out there. It's a free resource. It's supported. It's hosted. Why can't we begin to offer open courses on Core Sites and begin to educate our community uh, about how to leverage technology better in the classroom? Or why can't we extend this as a platform for users to go ahead and leverage and teach a developmental math or teach uh, you know, nursing basics? So really, no matter the topic, Core Sites hopefully can serve as a way for you to begin to offer some open education. And again, for those who may have joined us, Core Sites is just also a way for you to be able to supplement your, your on-site classes or perhaps offer a full online class um, to others, whether or not you feel like it, it needs to be massive or if you want it to be a closed experience as well. So thus far, in a couple of years, we've gained a quite a spread of international presence on core sites. Uh, we have almost 50,000 or a little over 50,000 instructor users who are teaching approximately 485,000 student users in 159 countries. So when we think about the uh, you know, really the touch that you can have and the ability for you to attract students from around the world to be able to engage with one another, uh, to talk about the different topics that you have, or perhaps you just want to make sure that you uh, are able to engage a local audience, that's okay too. Uh, we, we have localized or translated the Core Science platform into five languages, and currently those are Dutch, French, German, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Spanish. Um, so that is just the system elements. We do still have the embedded language packs of the Blackboard Learn technology that you can leverage uh, in the course itself. And those include a lot more languages like Russian, um, uh, Asian languages like Chinese and Japanese as well, and Arabic. Okay, so you can definitely feel comfortable that your courses can be seen in native languages or you, if you're teaching a language program, that also can happen as well. We do have a few Spanish MOOCs that are going on presently. Okay, so the tools themselves really is a flexible platform to enable you to offer some social and active learning. And as we, those of you who might have participated in MOOCs before, um, you know, some of them might have just been content specific. Uh, pushing information out to you to, for a particular topic. Um, some of them might have allowed you to engage with others in discussions. Some of them might have allowed you to go ahead and uh, review material from others, from others as, as well to go ahead and get some peer-to-peer -peer learning going on. So Core Sites would be very similar. I think we also have some, a, a much more powerful and flexible platform to really support any type of teaching approach, any type of uh, topic, any type of audience that you're looking to target. So you see that we have a really wide array of, of actual um, capabilities, again, supplementing the physical classroom with a web presence all the way up to um, you know, complete, creating a complete asynchronous self-paced opportunity or having a blended program with a lot of collaboration and assessment tools at your fingertips. Okay, so as I mentioned that we um, ourselves wanted to go ahead and begin to educate our community, so we felt it was important for us to know much more about the MOOC space by offering them ourselves. And we have learned quite a bit and I can really share that knowledge with you if you go ahead and uh, decide to choose Core Science as an open educational platform for you or your institution. So we've offered two so far. Um, and we have a third one with the SUNY uh, going on as well, the SUNY Open course that I put there in the, the chat area. But our first one was, was hosted by Dr. Curtis Bonk of Indiana University and focused a lot on how you can leverage online learning tools to really engage students and motivate them. As we know, that's a huge um, issue 
particularly with online learning. So you can see we had four major sections. This is just an image of the badge that we used. So the four sections really focus on motivation, retention, uh, diversifying activities to go ahead and target those diverse learning styles uh, and preferences, and then particularly, again, in the online realm. So we had over 30 countries represented in with, with 4,200 folks um, who were actively engaged in the course. It is still open, so you can see that the open.coursites.com is another URL you can use to participate and review the resources in the course, and you're even allowed or welcome to go ahead and obtain a badge uh, as you proceed through the material as well. There's no live cohort still going on, but there might be there are still people, a couple hundred people in there who have joined after the initial 4,200 who are probably in there uh, posting questions and interacting. So please feel free to, to take advantage of that. And then last fall, we went ahead and ran a course on designing an exemplary course. So this focused, again, quite a bit on uh, creating a very engaging and dynamic learning experience no matter, again, whether you're just creating a web enhancement to your online course or your on-site course, or whether you're creating a blended learning experience, or whether you're creating a full online course experience. As, as we know, the interactions and engagement levels differ between those different models. So uh, we have a, an exemplary course program that we sponsor at Blackboard, and what the program covered was a really in-depth look at the rubric that's used to go ahead and uh, measure the exemplary nature of the courses that get submitted to our exemplary course program. So we covered the four major areas that you can see in our badge here, which was the overall design, the navigation, the ease of use of the course, the access to information, the assessment, did the assessment match the objectives, did it, did it equal the level of the content that's being presented, um, and then the interaction. So I did it encourage student-to-student -student interaction, student-to-teacher interaction, student-to-content interaction, um, and then how were the students being supported throughout the course. So those are the four major elements of the rubric itself. And again, this course is also open for you to review. You can review the recordings of each of the live sessions. We had previous, uh, you know, the directors of the program are actually the clients of Blackboard who have really continued to refine the rubric as that online paradigm has, has changed and, and been updated. And then each some winners have uh, presented on how you know they created their course, who were who were designated as exemplaries, giving some best practices and tips there. Okay, so we did again really have uh, a good amount of lessons learned in that space. Um, just wanted to give you a quick glimpse into the course experience, where you can see you know a really large screenshot of our course menu that grew over time. It was a f the very first course we ran was a five-week experience. So we decided to orient our students to make sure that they were comfortable with the platform, with the learning technology, before the learning actually was starting to take place. Um, so we gave them a week to go ahead and get in there, comfortable with the environment. We wanted to make sure that they were always updated. So we had a course updates and calendar item to make sure that they had access to our live link sessions, um, access to any other kinds of uh, opportunities that arose as, as participants were sharing opportunities, if new content was being released, new assessments, and such like that. Um, and this is where we also provided a link to a Twitter feed where we really tried to, to bridge the, what was happening within the course space, within the LMS, with what was happening outside in the blogosphere and social media sphere. So we created a course hashtag, had everyone use that hashtag if they were posting to Twitter or posting to their blog, and helped to aggregate that information um, through tools like Twitter and another one known as Paperly, which I'll go ahead and type that in here as well. And some of you may also be familiar with Scoop it as well. Those are fun tools to go ahead and begin to collect. Uh, even for yourselves, if you're interested in MOOCs, you can go ahead and create a Paperly or a Scoop It and uh, give yourself like an, a daily newsletter, daily sort of online magazine format of, of articles that have come out with that particular topic. And, and we embedded that within the course just so the students would be able to have that bridge. Okay, and then the Discover was the weekly content. So the Dr. Bonk made available some readings from his research. We recorded um, his live sessions. Um, he had some additional resources through 
collaborators and co-authors of, of, of other work that he's produced. So a blend of the different content within the weekly areas. And this is where the, re the, the participants um, went ahead and completed some activities where they went ahead and reviewed perhaps some, some research of his and suggested how they might implement his suggestions into their courses. One of his books um, was on 100 activities to go ahead and, and, and use in the course. So a lot of the participants reviewed those and gave him great feedback on whether the activities would work or would not work in their environment and why. So this was a great exchange of information, um, research, and knowledge that took place. Part of it, too, was um, you can see that we had, it's kind of a little blurry here. As I showed you earlier, we had the ability for folks to earn a badge. So if everyone did participate at the level um, as was expected, they, you can go ahead and earn a badge. And we'll talk about how you would be able to store that with the Mozilla Open Badge Backpack. OK, we had a, a great variety, you can see, of participation options where folks were discussing in a discussion board. They were keeping a blog of the, their learning activities, suggesting resources, suggesting um, different um, other uh, related activities that they might have used or, again, shared why or why not what, what Dr. Bonk suggested uh, might work for them. OK, and then we used a wiki to go ahead and try to get everyone to share, centrally share some resources uh, of their own. And then we did go ahead and allow folks to group up. Since we did have over 4,000 users in the course, we allowed the users to um, enter groups to make it a bit more of an intimate experience as discussing um, you know, particular topics within a, 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 an audience of, of that large can sometimes become overwhelming. So the groups really help to allow you to connect to users who even might be closer to your particular area of instruction or your level of instruction. Okay, so we allowed the users to group up in that capacity, and that would be something that you could also offer uh, in your open course. And then, as I mentioned, CourseSites is supported, so we linked out to the support page, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the support options as well. Okay, so if, if and when you decide to go ahead and offer a, a course with CourseSites, what some of the ways that you would be able to have participants become aware of your course as well as get involved in your course is through the instructor homepage. Okay? So I just have a quick snapshot here of our open. So if you go to the open.coursites.com page, you'll see that this is the page um, that you'll see and the courses that we've offered to date would be listed here. As you activate that link, you're then sent to what we refer to as the course homepage. Okay? And that's where users are able to browse as a guest if you'd like, or they can go ahead and self-enroll. And there's a variety of other enrollment options as well. In case, again, you want to offer a closed course, you can have students request enrollment where you need to approve. Or again, the self-enroll just allows them to sign up and go ahead and begin, begin learning. And you can control when that takes place. So you can have an enrollment period uh, before the actual instructional period takes place, uh, and then cut off that enrollment period if and when you see fit. All right, and then the students can come back directly to this page to go ahead and log in, as well as learn a little bit more about the instructors. And as we took a look earlier, if you publish the course as an open educational resource, that's where your other cons consumers can, can grab that content. And just as a reminder, that page can be shared by you through your social networks or others uh, to make sure that you know, everyone becomes more aware of that opportunity. So to take a closer look, um, you know, at the instructor institution homepage, when we first created Core Sites, these homepages were very geared toward the individual instructor, but we've been helping institutions uh, like SUNY um, and others, University of Illinois at Springfield and UMass, just to name a few, to modify the page to align a bit more with the brand. Um, sometimes the the reasoning for offering massive open online courses is to highlight some of the instructional resources, some of the faculty and the curriculum at the institution. So they want to carry forth the brand. So we're aware of that and willing to work with you if that's a need uh, that you have. Okay, and then this is where, again, the courses that you offer become uh, available to the public for them to go ahead and enroll as we saw earlier. Uh, part of the instructor homepage or institution homepage gives you the ability to import um, an, a blog feed. Okay? And this goes, is something that if you already have a blog of your own or you have an institution which has a blog that you'd like to also publish on this page for further consumption, is something that you have the ability to do.
And then as we take a deeper look into the course homepage, again, you have the social sharing aspects of it, the description from the course that comes through so the participants know what the opportunity is all about and the opportunity to look as a guest, but this was up to you to, if, to enable that or not, and to go ahead and enroll. And one of the biggest or widest used options is the self-enrollment option uh, within the, uh, the, the settings that we provide to you. Okay? And we talked a little bit already about um, you know, the instructor and the OER pieces. And I think an important piece too is that these pages are provided through a shortened course URL. So it's very easy to share. And as you're sharing these through the social network, um, it's not these long URLs that um, might overwhelm some other folks, but they're shortened course URLs so that it's very easy to, to see and, and to remember to come back to. So in building a course experience, some of the other MOOC-friendly components um, would be a new feature that we've recently released called Video Everywhere, Video Capture Everywhere. And so from within the platform, as you're building an item, you have a very easy ability to go ahead and really much at the click of a button, activate your webcam, and go ahead and record content. Okay, so we know that video content is becoming much more prevalent and much more uh, preferred by end users in not only massive open online courses, but just in online courses in general. So you can go ahead and easily incorporate these segments into your courses. Uh, this is powered by YouTube, so we're leveraging the market leader in terms of the streaming of that information into the course for students. So it's not storing it in the course space itself, but going ahead and storing that and streaming that through YouTube. It's a very quick and easy way for you to get started without having to have you know, a huge production um, behind you to go ahead and, and offer that content to students. Parts of uh, the requests that we received by students, particularly in our open courses, was the further need to network and connect with other users. So again, we, as you saw, we, host, we provided the ability for them to uh, connect in many ways through the collaboration tools like discussions and blogs and wikis, but they really wanted also another means to look for users in the course. So we went ahead and enhanced the roster and course sites to give the users the ability to search easily search among users. Um, those of you who might be coming you know, from Canada, from Russia, might be interested, like, who's in this MOOC and from these countries or even my city? So you could search through uh, the roster quite easily, particularly of 4,000. It flattens that information and, and filters that for you uh, pretty quickly and then presents you with uh, a nice profile card of an image of the, the folks who have uploaded a, an avatar and then the information that they've shared to date including their social network information or if they've gone ahead and completed an affiliation. Okay, and you also have the ability to tag as a favorite so in case you wanted to keep in touch with Kathy or perhaps if I found Arena in the course or Rhonda, I could go ahead and tag them as a favorite and that would follow you then you know, no matter how many courses you participated in in course sites. Okay, and then also uh, seeing that the users also continue, wanted to continue to bridge what was happening inside the course space with what was happening in, in, in their own you know, blogospheres and, and the social media space, we did provide an opportunity for, for users to uh, subscribe to the blogs within the course. So they could go ahead and grab an RSS or an Atom feed, and these are just two methods for uh, you to go ahead and consume that information in external readers, which Google provides one at no cost and you could grab the URL and set that up so that you can, without having to log into course sites, see the activity of what's been happening in the blogs and even filtering that down to just the blogs that you were participating in. If you're in the course, this is what the screenshot shows. There's an area in the course just to see a quick update of all the recent blog posts um, and then you can mark those as red. So if you enter the full blogs, that also is keeping track of what you've done. Okay, and as part of the learning experience that we offered, we did offer some badges, which I mentioned earlier, and we enabled the users to go ahead and store those within the Mozilla Open Badge Backpack, which is an initiative offered by Mozilla organization um, and, and really an effort to try to standardize uh, this badge credentialing 
uh, I would call it somewhat of a craze that's going on and create some, some standardization with that. But it really did serve as a great way to motivate users, particularly in this massive, uh, the size of this course, to continue to engage with the content with other, with other users. Um, so we really did find that it, 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 it did engage them um, quite heavily, not only as, you know, it's not a formalized credential, although by storing it in a Mozilla backpack, they have a bit more credibility. Uh, but this would be something that you would be able to offer as well um, if you would want to somewhat formalize your learning opportunity, whether it be completion of um, a, I'm just uh, looking at the questions here, so I'll get to your question in a second, Benjamin. But whether it be the completion of a, an assessment or completion of certain activities in the course, you can go ahead and uh, offer a badge yourself. And we can help you work through the requirements. Uh, and, and allow the users to store that within the Mozilla Open Badge Backpack. So Benjamin, in answer to your question, I'd have to think back. Um, I do have a colleague here on the call as well. Um, but I believe that we had a bit over 200 folks actually complete all of the activities and then decide to store the badge. So there was a difference with folks who just completed versus um, storing the badge. So we did, I think, have a little over two or 250 folks proceed all the way through to that, that step. And something else that we've recently released, as you can see, we made it available here in February, um, is another step in the social learning realm. Okay, so outside of the course experience, we've basically launched a uh, Blackboard academic framework and enable that on course sites. So the users who come into your courses would be able to establish a profile within the cloud um, that populates to the collaboration tools within the course, such as having an avatar within the discussion or blog area with further information, um, like we saw with the roster. But it also provides them with an academic network to find others who might be uh, studying similar topics as to them or be interested in similar topics. So there's not only a people tool, but there's a spaces tool where the, you could create an ad hoc space and, again, an out of course uh, wall of sorts or a place for folks to go to communicate with one another about the topic, just to generally network and communicate. Um, but the, these, these participants can go ahead and find other people on the network. They can follow the people on the network and message with them um, on the network as well. So just broadening their uh, ability to go ahead and find others with similar interests and continue to expand their, their academic network. So I see your question there, uh, Nivia about the badges. So I think it really, it's, I guess I would say, yes, it is similar to what Khan Academy offers because they're offering badges based on uh, the completion of certain requirements. Um, so similarly in course sites, we have the ability for you to uh, have some certain rules set up for the, for the participants to have to meet in order to achieve the badge itself. So there would be some ability for you to go ahead and set up some criteria. Um, you know, aligning with your assessment needs to go ahead and make sure that those who only met your requirements actually do receive the badge. And then the storage into um, the Mozilla backpack is what we would be able to help offer for you as well. Okay, so George, thanks for that help. So we did have, um, my numbers were a little high, so 158 badges for that particular course, but as George mentioned in, in the uh, courses that we're offering so far, including the Designing Exemplary course as well as the current SUNY OER course, we have over 500 now folks who have decided to obtain the badge and store that within the Open Badge Backpack. So we talked a little bit about the, the profile here. And I think one of the biggest questions that folks usually have, particularly in offering a, a large open course, is how that opportunity can be supported. So in the creation of the uh, open educational experience, myself and Sarah are here to support you as well as our live support team. You can see that uh, they are available Eastern time from 8 to 8 as, on Monday through Friday as well as Saturday and Sunday 9 to 5. Um, outside of those areas, uh, they can submit a ticket or search through the knowledge base, but by phone or by chat, they can access the live support. At present, it is in English only. Um, 
So that is a consideration depending on the audience uh, that you will be targeting and supporting as well. Okay, so just to quickly review, we're coming up at the top of the hour. Um, some of the, the reasons why we think core sites might be able to uh, fully support your open educational initiatives is that it is fully hosted and supported, as we just reviewed. We are promising to keep the platform of core sites on the latest Blackboard technology. Okay, so you'll always have access to the latest and greatest. Uh, there is no limit to the number of students at present that you can go ahead and educate within your courses. So that is definitely something that you can accomplish through some open enrollment and um, our cooperation with you to help spread the word about your courses. And that can be done both through the institution and course homepage that we took a look at, um, as well as some of the social sharing. And if you think back, uh, you know, I showed that catalog that we'll be releasing this week will also be a further extension of that uh, search and discovery process for your opportunities. Okay, we have a great number of social and active learning tools that we took a look at a couple today, along with the roster to help uh, your, your participants further network and learn from one another. And we will be able to assist you with creating some badge credentialing within your courses, as long, along with the storage to the Mozilla Open Badge Backpack. And then if you decide you want to make your course, and whether it's a massive open online course or just a regular resource, you have the easy way to publish that as an open educational resource. And again, that adoption becomes quite easy for other Blackboard users, but also, as we discussed, through the common cartridge capability um, and package, that it broadens that uh, consumption out to other learning management systems as well. Okay, thanks George for continuing to um, provide some of those updates. Really appreciate that. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that what George is, is mentioning there in the chat uh, really gives you a sense of the, the type of response that we've seen. Um, I mean, I think it has a lot to do with Dr. Bunk and his uh, content, as well, but along with the course design, along with what the platform has had to offer, okay, along with the other courses that we've we've been able to offer as well. And we hope to enable you to do the same with your open education uh, initiatives as well. So Nithya, great, great um, comment there. So in this first iteration, um, your question about when publishing the course as an OER, is it possible to select our choice of CC license? Or is it CC BY? Is that the standard? So at present, CC BY is the, the current choice. Um, when we do attach the Explore platform, it will become uh, a bit more broad so to be able to choose which, which license it gets tagged to the content. Um, and then we're looking to align that with, with the OER capability as well, um, making that, granular, that choice a bit granular. So let me know if that helped to answer your question. So I know that we're coming at the top of the hour. That was it in terms of what we have to pr um, provide to you today. I really appreciate your participation and your questions so far. I will stay on to answer further questions, but please feel free to stay in touch with us. Again, we are at coresites.com. Uh, we do have our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash coresites, where you can obtain tutorials along with other videos from um, our users who would be sharing some of their success stories with you. Uh, we have our Facebook page, facebook.com Facebook slash course sites, and then uh, at our Twitter, at course sites, to be able to follow us. So, okay, just trying to follow the feed here through the chat, so let me catch up a little bit um, as folks are leaving. Okay, so Dimitar would help yeah, to, to answer that question a little bit. Um, Benjamin, how is CoreSites paid for? Where is the commercial benefit for Blackboard? So, uh, you know, Blackboard, CoreSites.